welcome back everyone so in today's video i will be showing you how to unload data from amazon redshift to amazon s3 using aws glue okay so let's get to it all right so like i mentioned in today's video i'll be showing you how to unload data from amazon redshift to amazon s3 using aws glue all right so let's get to it so i'm going to go over to my aws account and i will be showing you my setup so the services that we will be using in this video are uh, aws glue aws redshift and amazon s3 okay so i'm going to go over first to amazon redshift so i'm running on aws redshift serverless and if you don't have redshift serverless created i made videos previously where i went through the process of creating serverless so definitely do take a look into those videos if you want to know the process of creating redshift serverless and once you're here all you have to do is go to this uh, section here where it says query editor and just click this this is going to open a new section here where you can start now running your query so you have the browser editor right here i'm going to show you the databases that i have in my serverless now and i do have these three here the one that will be using in this video is this one for dev this is where i have the table created for you that will be unloading to uh aws s3 okay so i have this uh, table here for orders and this table i created this table in the previous video where we went through the process of loading data from um, s3 to redshift using glue okay so this video is kind of uh, the reverse of that so in instead of loading the data from s3 to redshift we are now uh, loading the data back to s3 or uh, this is basically the unloading process so if you want to unload data that is in your data warehouse to s3 using glue this is the process now so this is again kind of the reverse of what we did the last time um, so i have the table here and we will be unloading this data to s3 and in this case we will be using a clue okay so this is a table and i'll just quickly uh select and show you the data for this so this is the this is how the data looks like and we have about 35 rows okay so we will be unloading this table and have it move to s3 okay so whichever use case that you have if you want to move your data from redshift to s3 you can use glue to do that so i'm going to show you how to do that okay so we have our redshift now right here and the next service that i'm going to show you is s3 so i'm going to show you s3 and the in s3 i have a packet right here for ck data deck and we are going to be unloading our data to this uh, folder here incoming data which is under the ck data deck okay so this is a this is going to be holding the data that's coming from redshift okay so we don't have anything right here and we expect that once we do our unloading we expect to see data uh, written right here okay so we have our s3 now ready and uh, for the other one is aws glue so i'm going to just open this clue here and um i'm going to go over now remember if you don't see in my home page here if if you don't see the service here then you can just look it up here okay so you can for example just type clue here and it's going to show up here just open it and it's going to bring you to the same section okay so in clue now this is where we need to configure our job that is going to bring the data from redshift and then we'll run the job and it's going to uh, push it over to s3 now there are a few things that you need to do here too so the the only thing i think that you need to do here you don't need to create a crawler but you can if you want to but in this case we are just going to make sure that our connections to redshift is working properly now i previously went through the process of creating connections to redshift and if you want to know the process of creating a, a connection from clue to redshift do take a look into that video um, there's a lot of issues when it comes to creating a connection from Clue to Redshift and it took me several hours to set this up so definitely take a look into that video because it's going to help you out in uh, making sure that your connection from Clue to Redshift is working properly okay so I'm just going to test this and make sure that it's running and uh, if it's good then we will go ahead then and create our ETL uh, job to 
bring our data okay so this is successful uh, so that means that i'm able to communicate to redshift from a uh, clue okay now from here the next thing that we need to do then is just go ahead and create our uh, etl tool so uh, etl job so in this case we have um two options that you can use uh, in the when it comes to the uh, creating an etl job you can do the a script which is going to be a PySpark job or you can use a visual ETL. So I'm going to just use the visual ETL because I feel like that one is easier to use. So uh, the first thing that we need to do here is to define our source. So the source in this case is coming from Redshift. So we will just scroll down here to Redshift here and we will uh, configure it. So uh, we have two options here. You can use direct connection which is recommended in this case or you can use a clue data catalog so if you create a crawler to your table in redshift then you can have the uh you can you can use this second option here uh but in this case i don't have you know i have my connection created and they're working so i'm just going to code with the direct the, the direct connection uh, so i have that selected and here we just need to select our connection and you can see that we have the database here and uh you have <clears throat> uh, an option here to choose a single table or you can enter a custom query here uh, but i'm just going to choose a single table because um, that's what i want to unload and we have to select the schema here in this case it's in public and we have to choose the table and the table here is orders so we are cool there and uh, you can see this one pops up for the im role we'll just enter the im role here okay so let me just make this one big screen okay so you just have to select the im role there and um this one is going to start this one is basically going to preview the data for you that is in your source uh while this one is running let's go ahead and configure our connections to s3 okay so i'm going to add another node here and i'm not going to do any transformations but if there's any kind of transformation that we want to do here like change schema uh, or do any joins you know uh, detect sensitive data and mask them you can do all of that but um, i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go directly to target here and our target in this case will be s3 so i'm just going to select it and we will go ahead and configure it so you can see here the node parent in this case will be redshift and uh here it's asking you which format you want to use before writing to s3 Parquet is usually a recommended one because it is compressed and it takes less space when you write your data to uh to redshift uh, sorry to s3 but in my case i i'm just going to use csv but you see you have a lot of options you have json uh, csv afro orc uh, Parquet, and all of this so i'm just going to go with csv but you can choose the Parquet one. This is a small file, so uh, I think it should not have any problem. And then you can choose a compression type if you want. I'm again going to choose none for this. And here we need to select uh, the packet that we want to write this to. So I have the the uh, packet, and I said we were we are going to write or to unload this data to incoming data uh, folder there. So I'm just going to select that and uh, you come down here, it's uh, uh, asking you to configure data catalog update options. So uh, in this, if you read this properly, it says choose how you want to update the data catalog table schema and partitions and says these options will only apply if the data catalog table is an S3 packed source. Now, uh, this one, the, my, my 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 data for this one is coming from redshift i you know unless i'm understanding this on the wrong way it seems to say that you can use this option if your data is coming from s3 uh, let me know in the comment section if i'm reading that uh the wrong way um it seems to say that if you are using your data and i haven't, I haven't tried this option really um so you can like for example choose this one or choose this one like this seems to say that if your data is if your source is coming from s3 then you can select the data catalog but in this case i'm you know i have the data coming from redshift so i'll just go with do not um update the data catalog okay and um the rest of this so there's a the, you can decide to check data or not if you decide to 
check this option for check data quality it's going to make sure that before when your job runs it's going to fail if there's no if there's no data in your source all right so data quality rules here column count is always greater than zero so if the column count is less than zero then this job is going to fail so i think this is good idea to have in place uh, but you can turn it off if if you want okay so that's it so we have our configuration here done and i'm just going to change this top job here and i will say redshift to s3 in this case okay again the other one that we we, we did in the previous video was uh s3 to redshift so this is a reverse um kind of process of that okay and uh so let's go back to our redshift here now and you can see that our preview is done and we have 35 records okay just like we have in redshift so this table in redshift has 35 records and uh, i don't know if i showed you that it's right here yeah so we have 35 records uh so we are able to preview our data and now the next thing that we just need to do is to go ahead and run this up now there are some, there are some few things that you can check here you have your output schema here see this is the this this is this will be the this will be the columns for the file that will be written to s3 and if you go here and check the output schema you will see the same okay so this is basically getting from a redshift and when we run our job we expect the file that will be written in s3 to have these um columns okay so from here you are good to go so the next thing that we just need to do is go ahead and click run here and this is going to run your glue job uh, to load this data to s3 um so from here you can monitor this job and um so you can click here few details just to expand this and from here you can start monitoring so the logs will be written here as well so you can just monitor uh just right from here to see if everything is good if you also want you can also go to cloudwatch so if you open cloudwatch logs you can see more information there as well uh, so this is also good um if you just want to make sure that uh, if there's any error that you can see the error here and go ahead and troubleshoot it if there's any problem so this is going to probably take three to four minutes to to run so we will let it run we'll just monitor it and when it's done we will see if we are successful or if we run into any error okay and then we'll jump over to s3 if it goes successfully and see if our file is now written there okay so we'll just monitor this and we'll come back one once it's done okay so looks like our job has successfully completed now and you can see the status here saying it succeeded this took around three minutes 16 seconds so let's go over now to our s3 and see if there's any file that has come through here so let's refresh this object here and as you can see now we have a lot of uh csv files written right here okay so your data now has successfully been written over to s3 okay so one thing you'll notice here is these files are partitioned and i think we probably had the um yeah so it, this it says here this one we didn't add partition key but i think clue automatically partitions your data during runtime because it does not want to create large files so as you can see this all of these files were partitioned and um let's see if we can click into this okay maybe you can download one and inspect it okay so you can see this is probably one partition and it's it has this amount of data so if you want to get all of your data then you'll have to combine all of the files there and uh, and um and and this is going to give you, you you know all of the records okay so that did not take us a long time and uh it's pretty straightforward um the only pain point really that i've seen is uh the connection here uh, the connections from uh clue to redshift this is where the, the the real pain point is if you can get over this one then the rest of the process should be pretty straightforward now one thing that i have to mention before we end this video is um when you are creating your connections one thing that you have to also add 
if you want to unload your data from Redshift to S3, the, the same way we did right now, is you you have to add uh, in your VPC. So if you go to your VPC endpoints, so if you go to your VPC endpoints, you have to add an endpoint for Clue right here, okay, to the security to the to same VPC. So if you click to this, this is a VPC ID that I'm using in my Clue and also redshift is using this s3 is using this so you also have to add clue here as well so that it's able to uh to connect okay so this is one of the things that i fixed before i i ran this job okay i went through all of these steps in the video that i previously made on how to connect clue to redshift so definitely please do take a look into that video and watch it if you want to know how to connect clue to uh redshift it's very important okay and it's going to show you the steps of doing that okay so uh, that's pretty much it so i just wanted to quickly show you how you can unload data from redshift to aws s3 using clue so if you have any use case that you have that requires you to move data from redshift to s3 then uh, you might want to leverage clue in that it's pretty straightforward and it will make your life much much easier all right guys that's all i had for you in this video if you found this video helpful please give thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not all right i will see you then in the next video bye bye